This video is sponsored by Nebula, the educational video streaming platform created by me and my creator friends. Check out Nebula for as low as $2.50 a month using the link in the description, or stay tuned to learn more. I rarely make videos entirely because of suggestions, but the Rotterdam Metro, the subject of today's video, has got to be the most requested video I have ever had, which is odd because Rotterdam isn't that big of a city, with only around 2 million people in the metro area. And yes, I know, perhaps this is big for Europe, but I do have an audience from cities around the world. Anyways, like its sibling to the north in Amsterdam, the Rotterdam Metro is quite funky. And unlike your standard issue rapid transit system, if we could say there was one, from level crossings to crazy interlining to unusual trains, it might even be the strangest metro out there. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Rotterdam Metro. If you enjoy videos about weird metros and countries around the world, consider supporting RM Transit on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. Rotterdam is a city in the southwestern Netherlands, that is part of the larger and tightly interconnected Randstad region, that also includes Utrecht, Amsterdam, and The Hague, which is even more tightly linked with Rotterdam than the others. Home to more than 8 million people, this region is closely tied together with frequent mainline rail service, some of which is even high speed. You can learn more about that in my Benelux High Speed Rail video. Rotterdam itself is a port city, despite the city centre being located 25 kilometres inland from the coast of the North Sea along the Nieuwe Maas River. Given its low-lying nature, as with much of the Netherlands, Rotterdam is covered with canals and other waterways, and as it turns out, its aforementioned port is the largest in the world outside of Asia, snaking along the riverside from the North Sea to the city. All of this makes building a traditional metro very difficult, as we saw in Amsterdam. Rotterdam city centre is largely located south of Rotterdam Central Station, which will connect you to much of the country as well as other parts of Europe on intercity and regional trains. The city centre was largely destroyed in the Second World War, and thus much of it was rebuilt according to modern sensibilities, visible through wide streets as well as the iconic Erasmusburg Bridge, which connects the city's south and north in the centre with trams, which crisscross the city on generous rights of way made possible by the city's grand boulevards. These trams are operated by RET, the urban public transport operator in Rotterdam that also operates the metro. RET literally stands for Rotterdam Electric Tram. And like all other public transit in the Netherlands, all accept payment with the unified national transit card, the OV chip card. I should also mention The Hague, home to the Parliament of the Netherlands, most of the Netherlands governmental institutions, as well as the International Court of Justice and many other international organizations. The Hague is a separate city from Rotterdam, but its strong rail connections and proximity to Rotterdam mean that they act as twin cities. In fact, the two cities actually share an airport, although unlike most airports they talk about in Transit Explained videos, the Rotterdam The Hague airport is one you're unlikely to ever fly into. Instead, virtually all long-haul flights into the Netherlands go to the massive Amsterdam Schiphol airport, which is 50 kilometers or so north of Rotterdam and can be reached 24 hours a day from the city as well as The Hague on rail, in as quickly as 25 minutes during the day. The last site I'd like to mention is Hoek van Holland, which is the corner formed by the Nieuwe Maas River and the North Sea, and sitting opposite parts of the massive ports. The area has a terminal where you can get on a ferry to the UK, as well as a large beach. Now, let's actually talk about the metro itself. What might surprise you given its length is that the Rotterdam metro actually really only has two trunk lines. One that passes through the city centre north-south, and another that passes through east-west. Like many metro systems, Rotterdam Metro's lines have branches off the main line in various directions, each of which is part of a longer service running through one of these central tunnels. Each service is given its own lettered name, with the ABC services running east-west and the DE services running north-south through the city centre. I don't like this way of naming routes when so much interlining is going on, and I would probably prefer the London approach to naming lines. I will say that when writing this video, the layout felt oddly familiar, and I think that's because the Rotterdam Metro's layout resembles that of the DC Metro, without the U-shaped red line, and with different branches. Now, those might already sound quite different, but fundamentally, both systems have an east-west trunk and a north-south trunk with branches splitting off in both directions, but then with one branch off of each trunk connecting up in the suburbs. In Rotterdam's case, lines C and D effectively tying the whole network's operations together, for better or for worse. 
What's clear is that the Rotterdam Metro is significantly more extensive, with more than double the trackage and roughly twice as many stations as the Amsterdam Metro. However, as with the Amsterdam Metro, a lot of connections are made between the Metro and NS National Rail, which is generally very frequent, including on both the east and west side of the east-west line and to both the Hague and Rotterdam Central stations. In fact, in a number of short segments, the Rotterdam Metro even shares corridors with heavy rail services. If you're wondering how the system manages to have so much trackage despite only having two central routes and a handful of branches, that would largely be because of two very long branches that were created by converting former suburban rail lines into Rotterdam Metro Line. One of these lines is Line B, Hook van Holland, which was extended 20 kilometers west of the previous western terminus of Schiedam Centrum and saw a number of enhancements when it was converted over to Metro use, including new grade separations and rebuilt infrastructure. The line to Hook van Holland, like some others on the network, does still feature some grade crossings, including at stations, reminiscent of a suburban train or tram service. Indeed, these routes are sometimes referred to as Snell Tram, as was the case in Amsterdam for its now defunct route. What's interesting is that the Rotterdam Metro uses a mixture of third rail in core sections and overhead wire power, notably in areas with grade crossings, again just like Amsterdam's former Snell Tram. If you're curious about this line, also known as the Hooksch Line, a metro to the beach, then you should really go check out this great video from Ontario Traffic Man from the line's opening a few years ago. Now, what can be confusing is that there are a bunch of overlapping service and network brands that interplay with the Rotterdam Metro. Rnet branding exists in some places and is used to denote high-quality transit services across the Randstad, and it's actually also seen on the Amsterdam Metro. While I find the branding quite cool, it also seems just a bit superfluous and unnecessarily confusing. There is also Randstad Rail, which while forming a slightly more coherent network, is also probably mostly needless from a branding perspective. Randstad Rail largely represents the various rail services that operate over the other converted suburban rail line on the Rotterdam Metro, traveling between Rotterdam and The Hague. This line, which carries Metro Line E, runs 20 kilometers between the cities, and a significant portion of it actually also serves trams. Well, tram trains, as I discussed in a previous video on Karlsruhe, Germany. The tram trains share tracks with Metro trains from just south of Den Haag Central, where trams cross a rather unique looking elevated guideway. As it turns out, the central station also has a rather nice set of dedicated Metro platforms built elevated above the station throat. The metro and trams split from the shared route at the edge of the Hague, and trams then continue onwards to Zoetermeer on a fully grade-separated right-of-way, which is ironic because as we've discussed, the Rotterdam metro itself still has a number of grade crossings. Within Zoetermeer, the lines are quite odd and pretzel around the city, connecting to mainline rail and crossing one another. Another interesting feature of Randstad Rail is that since the stations serve both metro trains and trams, they've got two platforms back to back, as the different services board at different heights. This is similar to the solution that was previously seen on the Snell Tram Line in Amsterdam, as well as in Karlsruhe on their tram train lines. All of this raises some very interesting questions. Is converting track and right-of-way previously used for mainline trains to metro service a good idea? Similar projects have obviously happened in different cities and are currently happening in places like Montreal with the REM and Sydney with Sydney Metro, not to mention places like London and New York historically. I think the truth is that like all things, people would like clear decisive answers on, it depends. Converting mainline rail tracks to Metro could ultimately limit the growth of the heavy rail network and sacrifice very expensive infrastructure. But on the other hand, converting to Metro can mean more and better service sooner and for less money. As in Rotterdam, it could also be used to free up valuable urban mainline rail infrastructure by redirecting some suburban trains underground into the Metro system. Perhaps the best plan in the long term is to do conversions where it makes sense to do so while avoiding anything that would be irreversible later. What is clear is that the Rotterdam Metro has a lot in common with the Amsterdam Metro. It operates in a wide variety of modes, from underground to at-grade and elevated, but it is perhaps underwhelming for a city with such famous success in urban mobility. Also, like its sibling to the north, the Rotterdam Metro sometimes feels more like an augmentation of the NS Rail network, which really forms the backbone of all public transport in the Netherlands. 
Metro can go to places where mainline trains may be impractical, and it's also flexible enough to use bits of old mainline rail infrastructure when they become available. What's also interesting is that the actual trains in Rotterdam are quite different from those in Amsterdam. While Amsterdam's metro has seen a mix of both traditional metro cars with two bogies and articulated units for use on the now defunct Snell tram line with three bogies, all of Rotterdam Metro's rolling stock is of the three or more bogey variety. These trains are thus quite similar to those seen on the Calgary C train, Istanbul Metro, and Frankfurt U-Bahn, with articulated vehicles supported across three bogies and with six doors per side per unit. Interestingly, the newest trains used in Rotterdam actually have four bogies, with two articulations and an additional center segment. Now, you're probably curious, what does the Rotterdam Metro have in the works? Well, there's not actually that much currently happening, as in Amsterdam. It seems that further enhancements and grade separations that could enable automation, as well as platform screen doors, are of interest, as in most places. But likely the biggest expansion would come in the form of taking over even more mainline rail corridors for metro service. What I think the Rotterdam Metro could do a lot in the future is serving as a model. Cities like Los Angeles and Calgary both adopted similar technology to Rotterdam for their rail networks, and could learn a ton from the network design, high quality stations, and interconnectivity provided by the Rotterdam Metro. Rather than talking about how high floor light rail is yesterday's technology, they should be talking about turning yesterday's transit networks into those of tomorrow. And if anywhere has the answer to that, I think it would surprise nobody that it would be in the Netherlands. Now, if you've made it to the end of the video, you must be at least a little bit interested in how the world's transit systems work, and enjoy learning about topics like public transit and infrastructure in depth. I've recently been checking out the Nebula original series Planning Ancient Rome by City Beautiful and learning about the history of this ancient city with lots of old infrastructure that spawned an empire, and as I said, it is exclusive to Nebula. Nebula is the streaming platform owned by me and my creator friends, featuring over 14,000 titles that you can watch ad-free, including exclusive and early access videos from educational creators like myself, Not Just Bikes, City Nerd, and City Beautiful. You can even check out new episodes of Jet Like the Game, which I am a big fan of, one week earlier on Nebula, if you can't wait to see where the gang is going next and if they're hopping on another train. Now, you can also get Nebula classes absolutely free with your base Nebula subscription and learn from all your favorite subject matter experts so that you too can be a master in your craft. This is one of the best ways you can support my channel and my content as a whole, and now you can get a Nebula subscription for as low as just $2.50 a month, or $30 a year, so go check out Nebula right now. A huge thank you to Jan Peter and Ontario Traffic Man for their fantastic footage used in this video. 